is the iPhone XR still a good buy in 2023? Well, considering that you can find them online for around $200 USD, it's a pretty tempting offer at that. And so, how well does each aspect hold up after nearly five years? How does it stack up in terms of value for money compared to other phones at this price? And if you're currently using a XR, is it time to upgrade? Let's find out, starting with the design. And by the way, timestamps are in the description if you'd like to see something specific. So starting off with the design, the XR adopted the all-screen layout of the iPhone X and XS, but being the cheaper model, that was pretty much the only thing it had in common. It had a much thicker, less premium build than its more flagship counterparts with aluminium rails instead of stainless steel. Plus, it only had one camera lens and bigger borders around the screen. Although, it did come in a wide array of quirky colours, being red, blue, coral, yellow, white and black. And this is very reminiscent of the colourful 2013 iPhone 5C, except the XR wasn't an abyss failure. Now as I said before, the phone is significantly thicker and heavier than the 10 and 10s, and it can feel quite bulky in the hand and pocket at times. Although to be fair, a lot of newer phones are pretty much the same. You can use the 10R with one hand, but it gets a little heavy after a while. Not really a deal breaker, but if you don't like big phones, then this can get annoying at times. Although the rounded corners do feel a lot better in my opinion than the flat sides we have nowadays. Now although the all screen setup still gives it a modern look, the notch and bezels have been shrunk down on more recent iPhone models, and the notch has been replaced entirely with the dynamic island on the 14 Pros. So the viewing experience is going to be better on newer iPhones, but for most people this shouldn't be an issue, you're still getting a pretty big screen. Plus we still get modern niceties like water resistance, wireless charging and Face ID. And the Face ID still works really fast with no lag or delays, although there are those few people out there including myself who still prefer Touch ID. And even if the single camera lens isn't as functional as 2, 3 or even 4 cameras, it definitely looks worlds of difference cleaner. So it's got that going for it. All in all, it's a very well executed, simplistic and minimal design that doesn't try to do anything drastic. And honestly, that's why it looks so good in my opinion, along with the colours of course. But moving back to the front of the phone, we have the display, which is honestly a pretty significant downgrade from 2023 standards. But for the vast majority of people, it's completely fine. It's a 6.1 inch 60Hz LCD retina panel with a resolution of 1792 by 828 along with a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. I mean, it's a good display, you can't see any pixels from a normal viewing distance, the size makes it really immersive for playing games and consuming content, and it gets bright enough for outdoor use at 625 nits. Happy days, right? Well, for non-techie people who just want a display that shows stuff, yeah. However, dig a little deep up, and you'll find that it actually has the same pixel density or sharpness as the iPhone 4 from 2010. That's right, this $700 smartphone was using 8 year old display technology from the same year that Apple released the first iPad. Plus, the screen resolution only adds up to around 720p, 828p to be precise, meaning that it can't actually show content like YouTube videos in full 1080p HD, which again did not match up to its price point in 2018. And lastly, it's only an LCD display, not OLED like many newer displays, so you're not getting those deep true blacks. Now, does all of this matter for the average Joe who wouldn't know or care whether the front camera was 7 or 200 megapixels? No, not at all. And as Apple planned, it was a sacrifice that went unnoticed by the average Joe who was the target audience, but at the same time, especially nowadays, it really leaves a lot to be desired compared to what else is out there. But with everything else about the phone being quite solid, having a display that was not noticeably worse for 99% of people was a small price to pay to keep costs down. And plus, this phone does not cost $700 anymore, less than half of that, and so this is much less of an issue than it was. So bottom line is that for the vast majority of people, it's fine. But if you want a better display, then an upgrade to something newer might do you good. Oh, and another minor thing, this was actually the first iPhone to subtly remove 3D touch from the display, replacing the pressure sensitive system with haptic touch, which is just long pressing on stuff instead of pressing hard. But even if that display didn't sound so appealing, then maybe the XR's camera setup will be redeeming. But before we get onto that, just a quick word from today's video sponsor, Keisku. So, you know how a lot of these clear phone cases start off looking super clean and shiny and then after just a few months turn into this nasty yellow mess? Well, the kicker with a case crew phone case is that it's made from a material called Crystal, which reduces the molecular gap in the structure by an insane 1400 times compared to the standard TPU material of most cases. This stops the breeding of bacteria inside the case that's responsible for turning it gross and yellow over time. Plus, this material also boasts top-notch drop protection. And get this, you can remove your phone from the case 
space up to 30,000 times without it even starting to weaken the material. Plus, the magnet inside these cases is seven times stronger than magnets inside traditional cases, keeping your phone locked in nice and tight. Also, the built-in kickstand makes it so much easier to view content on your phone like recipes and movies. Super, super useful. Get the last phone case you'll ever need from Case Crew at the link in the description below. Plus, you'll also get 10% off with the discount code TEXBRI. No spaces and no caps. And thanks so much to Case Crew for sponsoring this video and helping out the channel. And now, back to the iPhone XR's camera setup. On the rear, we get a single 12 megapixel lens and a 7 megapixel selfie camera on the front. Now, being nearly 5 years old, the technology has progressed quite a bit, but by no means are these cameras bad. They're still very decent, with sharp details, accurate colours, and great stabilisation. And they'll do the job just fine for capturing your memories, and can definitely take some rather impressive shots. Of course though, indoor shots are going to struggle as on most phones from this era, especially due to the lack of night mode. Night mode came to the iPhone 11 the following year, and drastically improved low light performance without using the flash. Therefore, the iPhone XR is significantly worse in this regard, so stepping up to the iPhone 11 might not be such a bad idea if low light performance is important to you. In addition, we also get a portrait mode on here, which works okay, it can struggle around the edges at times, and can only be used with people and not pets or objects, but for a single lens camera in the era where portrait mode was still quite new, it's good enough. All things considered, again, it's a darn good camera for the price. It'll capture your memories just fine, but it is a bit rough having no night mode on here. So the iPhone 11 for like 50 bucks more could be a game changer if you care about that. Plus, the newest iPhones have absolutely insane cameras in comparison, so if you're a camera person, it could be time for an upgrade. The selfie camera also does well enough nowadays. It's still a more than acceptable quality, although being only 7 megapixels, the images won't be as sharp compared to what we have now. But all in all, you know, it still does the job just fine. It's just not anything spectacular. Now, video can be shot on the 10R in up to 4K at 60 frames per second, and it still really shines here. You can still take exceptional footage, it's just so good for the price point. iPhone video has tended to hold up really well in recent years. Even though an iPhone could be a few years old, the video will still hold its ground really nicely. And the 10R is a prime example of this, being sharp with great stabilisation. Of course, low light situations will see the phone fall slightly short, there will be a bit of grain, newer iPhones are obviously going to have improved by a bit, but all in all, you know, it's still really good for most people out there. Now moving on to the performance, this just might be the best aspect of the 10R, with the phone still being a buttery and smooth experience on its most modern software, iOS 16. It's got the Apple A12 chipset, along with 3GB of RAM. And yes, if you're really, really observant, then you can tell it's not 100% up to scratch with the newest iPhones, but it's really not far off at all. Probably identical to the average person, and it's really amazing for the price. Things open fast, there's no lag, and powerful activity like running tons of things in the background or playing power-hungry games isn't a problem. It's still just an overall nice, pleasant user experience, and it shows how great now Apple is at keeping their older devices snappy and usable. Instead of the old days where a phone would begin to get bogged down after three or four years, now Apple wants you to get as much use out of your device as possible. So power user or not, the iPhone XR is going to feel as buttery and snappy as you could ever need. Performance isn't really something you need to worry about too much when comparing iPhones, unless you're comparing it to like the newest phones, then there might be a noticeable difference, but nothing groundbreaking. Now moving on to the longevity of the XR, meaning how long it'll remain usable for and receive software support, it's still got a decent chunk of life left, but it's not going to be the absolute best long-term solution. Nowadays, Apple usually gives their phones around 6 to 7 years of updates, which means the XR should receive updates until the September of 2024 at the very least, but could also get up to 2025 or even 2026. There is a good chance in my opinion that it might get cut off at the same time as the 2017 iPhones, but nothing is official yet. Either way, you should still get a decent bit of use out of it, even for a year or so after software support drops. Although, if you're someone who likes to keep their phone for years and years, there are much better long-term solutions out there. And finally, moving on to the battery life, the iPhone XR has a pretty darn chunky 2942mAh cell. Assuming the battery is in good health after all these years, you should still get through a day just fine with light to moderate use. However, it's not any kind of battery life champion. Heavy use for hours and hours will drain it, especially if the battery health is below 80%. So if you use your phone a lot or do power intensive things, then the 10R might not be great in terms of battery. If it's gotten really bad, then it's probably time for an upgrade or battery replacement. Although for just normal and sometimes heavy use, it should still pull through if the battery is in good condition. Of course, battery replacements are a thing, but if you make sure the battery health of the phone is good before you buy it, then you'll save yourself a bit of cash and hassle too. 
And so that pretty much covers each aspect of the iPhone XR from a 2023 perspective. Now let's talk about whether it's the right device for you. On the used market, the XR is typically available for $200 to $250 USD, which is okay value. It's not the most amazing deal out there. You'd be much better off spending like 50 bucks more for an iPhone 11, which has significantly better cameras, packing in an ultra wide camera along with night mode. Plus it's got a better chipset that will help it last better in the long term. So if you can, the iPhone 11 is worth the little extra mile for a significantly better device. I've actually done a whole video on the iPhone 11 in 2023. So if you want to check that out, click the tab at the top right of the screen right about now. But at the same time, if you find an absolute ripper of an unmissable deal for a 10R, like 150 bucks, then honestly go with that. But if the price isn't a concern, the iPhone 11 is a much better phone for only a little bit more. At the same time though, the 10R is still really solid. And if you're using one, you shouldn't need to upgrade just yet if the battery and cameras are still doing well for you. Because app compatibility wise, you should still get a few more years of use out of it. And again, if you do find an absolutely unmissable deal for a 10R, then by all means, go for it. But I do strongly recommend spending just a little bit extra for the iPhone 11. But all in all, the 10R has been a great phone. It brought the innovation of the all-screen design down to a more affordable price point, made up a lot of money, rightfully so, and has continued to be a solid, reliable handset for millions of people over the course of its four and a bit years. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please make sure you drop me a like and subscribe to Techspree for more reviews, insights, and the occasional unboxing. Also, if you want to have a sticky beak at me, my Instagram is at tech double underscore spree, and my Twitter is at techspree1. Thank you so much for watching, this is Tom with Techspree, and I'll see you as always next time.